Hey, problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today's video, I'm gonna solve three equations uh, in trig identity. So this is solve for theta, solve for x, uh, using all of our skills of algebra, all of our skills of trig, multiple solutions within a given domain. Um, and these are really based on trig identities. So this is solving equations with trig identities. Let me put the camera over my shoulder and we'll get started on the first problem right here. So a couple things I note before I even start this is that if theta, so this is degrees, there is a domain attached to it, it is saying theta is an element of the set negative 180 to 180, which is the same thing as saying theta is greater than or equal to negative 180 or less than or equal to 180. So I only want solutions in that set. This is really no different than saying 4x squared is equal to 3 solve for x. The way I do that is divide both sides by 4. Those will cancel. Take the square root of both sides. And x is equal to the square root of 3 over the square root of 4. But don't forget when you take the square root it's both plus or minus. So that's the exact same thing here. I'm going to just um, work with sine of theta instead of x. So the first thing I'll do is divide both sides by 4 to get sine squared of theta is equal to 3 fourths. From there, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Square root of a square cancel. I'll do that to this side as well, leaving you a sine of theta is, whoops, is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3 over the square root of 4. Square root of 4 is 2. This is the exact value problem. So that means this is going to be one of the triangles I know. This is sine of theta, so this is opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm looking for a positive root 3 over 2. That's going to happen here, where the opposite is root 3 over 2. I could use Pythagorean theorem and see that this is 1 squared plus root 3 squared equals 2 squared. I recognize that as a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So that angle will be 60. That'll happen here, but it'll also happen here in the second quadrant where the opposites root 3 over 2 and the reference is 60. Because it's the square root and I have a positive and negative, it'll also happen down here where the opposites negative root 3, the hypotenuse is 2, the reference is 60, or down here with the reference is 60 where the opposites negative root 3 hypotenuse is 2. So I'm going to actually have four reference triangles right there. Looks like a little butterfly. So I'm going to have four solutions in 0 to 360. I don't want every one of those solutions, 60, 120, 240, 300. I only want the solutions in this domain. So this domain starts at negative 180 to 0. So 0 to negative 180 and then 0 to positive 180. So the solutions in that set would be the 60, the 120, the negative 60, and the negative 120, that 60 reference there. So there are four solutions in this set, and those are them right here. All right, moving on to the next problem. This problem right here, two sine squared of theta, plus sine of theta equals zero. With the domain, theta is an element of all real numbers. Kind of the algebra equivalent of this is 2x squared plus x equals zero. If I could get these things into quantities multiplied together, then I have the zero sum rule where I have quantities multiplied together to equal zero. So either one or the other is equal to zero. There's only two, um, factors here. So what I'm going to do is pull out the common factor of x, leaving me with 2x plus 1. Rather than factor out an x, the reverse of that is a check, is distribution, 2x squared plus x. So I, I did it correctly. Either x equals 0 or 2x plus 1 equals 0. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to factor out a sine of theta, the common term in each. Sine of theta comes out leaving me with 2 sine of theta plus 1. 
That means either sine of theta has to be equal to zero, or, or two sine of theta plus one has to be equal to zero. And then I'll solve both these equations here. I'll subtract one from both sides to give me two sine of theta equal to negative one. Divide both sides by two and sine of theta is equal to negative a half. So this is a negative ratio of sides where the opposite's negative one. Hypotenuse is two. That could happen down here where the opposite's negative one. Hypotenuse is two. Or down in the fourth quadrant. And then I could do one squared plus what squared equals two squared. That's a root three. That's a negative root three. I recognize that as a 30, 60, 90 triangle. The angle opposite the one is 30. So my reference are 30s in the third and fourth quadrant. So the first solution would be 180 plus 30, 210 degrees, or 30 short of 360, 330 degrees. But theta is an element of all real numbers, so I have to have a series of solutions. So I'm gonna add 360n to that, where n is an integer and the number of revolutions the way I am. This in blue here is a general solution for this piece. Now I need the general solution for that piece. Sine of theta is equal to zero. This is a fraction zero over one, where my opposite is zero and my hypotenuse is one. That's gonna happen right here at zero degrees, where the opposite is zero, the hypotenuse is one, or over here at 180 degrees. So they're imaginary triangles. Those are my two solutions. Those will be zero plus 360n and 180 plus 360n. But a more efficient way to write it is I could see it's gonna repeat itself every 180 degrees. So this will cover all solutions. That'll cover my zero, my 180, my 360. So my solution to this problem is all three of these series of answers. Okay, one last problem. This problem right here, first thing I know is that we're talking about x, so we're in radians, and then my domain is from zero to two pi. This kind of looks like two x squared minus five x plus two. If it were an algebra problem, I could factor that to two x and x. Factors a two or a two and a one. And then either they're both negative or both positive to give me a two. The middle term's a negative five, so it'd be a negative and a negative. The check is two x squared, first terms, outer terms, minus four x, inner terms, minus one x, so minus five x, last terms, negative one times negative two is two. So just like I factored this in algebra, I'm gonna factor it uh, using the trig function cosine, giving me two cosine of x, and cosine of x, a two is equal to zero. These are both negative, whoops, negative one, Double check, two cosine squared of x minus cosine minus four cosine gives me my negative five cosine plus two. So that means either two cosine of x minus one has to be equal to zero or cosine of x minus two has to be equal to zero, zero sum property. So on the left side here, I'll add one to both sides to give me two cosine of x is equal to one. Divide both sides by two. So cosine of x is equal to a half. This is my adjacent, because it's cosine. This is my hypotenuse. It's a positive ratio of sides where my adjacent is one. My hypotenuse is two. So that'll happen in the first quadrant. Cosine will also be positive in the fourth quadrant where my adjacent's one, my hypotenuse is two. Pythagorean theorem, root three. 
Once again, the same 30, 60, 90 triangle. Reference are 60s. Then my domain, x, is an element of the set 0 to 2 pi. So I have to convert these to radians, pi over 3. And I only want the ones from 0 to 2 pi. So this solution here would be the 1 third pi, 60 degrees. And then 300 degrees is 5 pi over 3. So those are the two solutions from this side of the zero sum property in this given domain. Then the second part, cosine of x minus 2 equals 0. I have cosine of x. I'm going to add 2 to both sides. Cosine of x is equal to 2. That's a fraction of adjacent over hypotenuse. When in a right triangle are you going to have an adjacent of 2 and a hypotenuse of 1? Well, you can't. The hypotenuse has to be longest side. There are no values in this solution. That's going to be the empty set. So my only answer to this problem right here are the values from this side. So my answer to 2 cosine squared of x minus 5 cosine of x plus 2 in this given domain x can be pi over 3 or 5 pi over 3. I could take that value and plug it back in here and here and make sure it works. In my calculator, I would have to be in radian mode. All right, well, I sure hope that helps you get started solving for x or theta in trig identities or trig problems. Uh, not too many problems in math incorporate about 10 years of study but these right here do. So I'm, I'm hoping that helped. Uh, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments below and I'll, and I'll try and answer them.